Good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to um, this afternoon's workshop on mindfulness meditation. Uh, my name is Sarah Bysak. I am the Director of Counseling and Psychological Services and Disability Services here at U of M Dearborn. And Jimmy, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Jimmy Wong. I'm the social worker at CAPS. Yep. All right. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in. Today, we're going to be going over a couple different things related to um, mindfulness and then engaging in some different types of relaxation processes for everybody to be able to try out. So I'm going to turn it over to Jimmy to do our first part. Okay. So what is mindfulness? Mindfulness is, uh, is about being aware of what is happening in the moment without making, without making judgment about what we notice. Uh, mindfulness teaches the skills that can be integrated into our daily life to reduce stress, manage pain, enhance the sleep, and strengthen our positive quality and improve overall quality of life. So mindfulness can be utilized anywhere. There's a lot of practice that we can do on a day-to-day -day basis. We can do informal practice, like mindfully walking, you know, paying attention to the sensation to our feet, you know, feeling the air coming in and out of our body and nose, or just simply paying attention to certain objects like leaf, grass, just being simply aware without any judgment, putting your full attention to something, purposely doing it. So we're, today we're gonna to talk about the benefits of why, uh, why we should do mindfulness meditation. It, strengthens, it has been proven to strengthen the immune system, psych, uh, psychosocial responses to stress and negative emotions, and improve social relationships with, uh, with family and strangers. It's been noted that when you do practice mindfulness, you're, you're more in tune to people's emotions. You're able to be more empathetic. You're able to recognize when someone's stressed out so you're just really being attuned to your own emotion and someone else's emotion because you're, 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 you're paying attention to them more. Um, it's been proven to reduce stress. Uh, it's been utilized in a lot of practices where we um, address with depressions, anxiety, increased well-being, our overall well-happiness. Um, it increases openness to experience, to care and kindness. It leads to greater psycho, uh, psycho, psychological mindfulness, which can include awareness to clear and flexibility, and to, and clear and flexible. Are you aware of any other benefits, Sarah? I mean, I think that really kind of covers all of them in, in general. I think that really the take home point here is just the fact that this can be really helpful in many different ways. So it's not just for if you're stressed out and wanting to relax, although it's completely appropriate for that too, but there's just so many connections between our mental well being and our physical well being and our physiological well being. And right now, while we're all trying to really focus on our health, um, and especially making sure our immune system is strengthened, this is going to be a really great thing to start engaging in. I think another benefit that we should note is that when you are practicing mindfulness meditation, we're using part of our brain that's not typically tapped into. So, you know, it's been, I think it's done, the study, the study has been done in somewhere in California. I can't, don't quote me on this, but they, they see that they're able to scan the brain and see certain active waves being utilized when you're practicing mindfulness meditation. That's very cool. I actually didn't know that. So thank you for that. That helped yeah. me learn something today. So it's super cool to, to see how our brain is being utilized differently when we're simply just sitting with ourselves and paying attention purposely. So I think what I have next for us is a 10 minute video. Uh, I want us to play it together and listen. So while we do this, uh, I wanna encourage you to do it with your eyes closed because our awareness is fully in tune when our eyes are closed. So we're gonna do it together, together okay? Let me know if everyone can hear the sound. A Mindfulness Meditation If it's loud, feel free to turn your audio down. During this meditation, we will focus on being mindful, finding that point where you are completely aware of the now. Find a time where you will not be disturbed. Sit or lie down. Whatever thoughts come and go in your mind at this point, simply observe them as if from a distance. Now, notice. 
notice your breathing and especially the still point between breaths. Breathe in through the nose to a count of four and out to the count of six. Don't strain to do these breaths, just do them as best you can whilst focusing on that still place between inhaling and exhaling. If thoughts intrude, see them as coloured balloons, as separate from you, and let them go. Let them float away. You are present now. You are not controlled by your thoughts. You can acknowledge that they are simply that, thoughts. They proceed from you, but they do not own you. You control them. Recognize that fact and let them go, to be driven away by the wind. Be conscious of the beat of blood within you. of the rhythm of your breathing. The brush of clothing against your skin. Feel the surface on which you sit, and how your body presses into it. Be aware of any scents that you can smell, or colours you can see. Notice the detail in the sounds you are hearing. Feel the temperature of the space you are in. Spend some moments simply being, being aware of all that is within you and around you right now, in this very moment. This is what it is to be mindful.
When you are ready, begin to go about your daily life once again, content in the reassurance that you can return to this mindfulness guide whenever you choose. I want to do a check-in. Oh, pause that real quick. How was that experience for everyone? I mean, I can be able to reflect on it at least right now. And again, <laughs> yeah. those of us that are watching this or those of you that are watching this after the fact, you know, we do encourage you to kind of sit down and do the same thing and reflect on what that experience was. Mm -hmm. I think the important thing about mindfulness is finding different exercises that really work for you. Like, mm -hmm. so like, I know for myself, I do really well when people are like reminding me like, oh, focus on this. Oh, if you feel this way, just let it go. That guidance really helps me. And so like the first part of that was just really great for me. When it becomes with no guidance, that's my struggle. My struggle is then when that's when my mind starts to wander. What I think is great about mindfulness is being able to say like, that's okay. That's part of it. No one's perfect. Even the gurus of mindfulness is, is not saying that you're gonna have no thoughts at all. You're going to have thoughts. That's part of it, but not, you know, once you catch yourself having those thoughts, not judging yourself and just letting those thoughts go. I really like the idea of a balloon. I sometimes will use the idea of a stream because um, to me, I like to put it on the stream and I know the thoughts go down the stream. At the end of the stream, there's a dam that will catch those thoughts. They're not going to go away. So I don't have to worry about that. They'll be there. I can just come back and be able to focus. Mm -hmm. So I love being able to do those. Um, I also have learned about myself that, you know, less is more for me. So a 10 minute exercise is a great amount of time for me. And I think we all are, you know, busy in our own different ways. And so being able to find out how long um, to be able to engage in it is going to be a really important part too. And so taking that time to be able to reflect and kind of feel how you feel afterwards. Um, I know for me, again, I, I like engaging in these. That's why I like doing these type of workshops because it's a very dedicated time then to just be able to sit and be, which can be so incredibly refreshing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, I, I, I enjoy the silence. Um, however, I do appreciate the point where we're being directed and guided through each part to you know focus on certain um, body parts, focusing on the feeling, the sensation. I thought those are all very good notes for us to have. And I think the, the cool part is they show you what you could potentially transition to doing this on your own without needing someone to guide you. However, I would like to note that, you know, having, there's nothing wrong being guided. You know, we, we all start somewhere and this is very helpful early on. And it's very beneficial to have a, such a cooling, a cool, um, cooling sound and someone that has a soft voice that just makes you feel super relaxed. Right. And, and I want to note that, uh, Oftentimes when we meditate in group, it's very powerful, but also it's okay to pass out too. I've seen so many people just fall asleep because it's so soothing, right? And it's the point of this is to not be judgmental. So just be with where you're at, acknowledge, who, you know, acknowledge those thoughts, let those thoughts go when you can, and really just simply try to be more with yourself. Because often through the time, our mind is so focused elsewhere, you know, focusing on the future. I guarantee many of us who are in that moment of silence, we're thinking about, do I need to go grocery shopping? Do I need to clean, right? Those thoughts pop up and it's okay to have those thoughts. And that's how our mind is all the time. And that's why it increases our stress level so high because our mind's constantly wandering and thinking. And what's cool about mindfulness is that it teaches you to acknowledge that you have those thoughts, but let's just be with you in this moment. Those are really good points. I'm glad that you pointed those things out. I especially at the point about voices because different people can find different voices relaxing. That's why I think it's good to be able to, when you're first starting out, find those voices that are comfort for you, but also then find your own inner voice of what is going to be comfort to you to when you're engaging in this. Mm -hmm. Very good point. All right, so I'm going to do just a couple different types of mindfulness. Again, Jimmy really kind of mentioned the fact that there's all different types of ways to engage in mindfulness meditation um, and also to be able to do it at different times. So we might not always have 10 minutes to be able to sit back and engage in a mindfulness meditation, although I would encourage us all to really look at our schedules and try to find those 10 minutes. And maybe we're feeling a little increase in stress or anxiety and we're out in public. And so maybe not feeling comfortable sitting back and closing our eyes for 10 minutes when we're out in public. You know, so finding some different mindfulness on the go can be really important to do. 
Jimmy mentioned in the introduction, you know, mindful walking is a great way to be able to do that. So just being able to walk and pay attention to your surroundings and really take note of your different senses and what you're seeing and what you're hearing, what you're smelling. You know, mindfulness shower, mindfulness eating, all of the different activities that we engage on in, in a regular basis can be things that we can be able to do in a mindful fashion that can bring, apart, bring about some of those positive benefits that were mentioned earlier too. So the exercise that I'm just gonna walk through everybody with is just a mindfulness of an object activity. Um, so I'm just gonna give you a little bit of information about it. So what a mindfulness of an object um, kind of or mindfulness of things activity looks like is recognizing that you know, there are things and objects around us at any time. So for example, you know, I'm in a room right now and I actually, you know, I have a fan above me. Um, I have a table that my laptop is sitting. I have a computer, I have windows. I also have my beagle in the background right now. And, and typically we tend to just kind of gloss over these kind of details or kind of nuances of things in our lives, just, you know, because it just makes things simpler not to be paying attention to all those details. And so this exercise is, exercise is actually about um, kind of bringing your attention to focus on a single object um, that is around you. Um, so some guidelines for this, um, and there's not that many, is that the object should be something that doesn't bring about really an emotional response. So if you have um, you know, a picture that is in your room that really brings up high emotions, that may be not the object to choose. It's supposed to be something that just can be really general. So a light, a fan, an air conditioner, anything that is just kind of a general, you know, single object that you can be able to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to describe kind of that object based on what you're seeing. Um, if you can be able to touch it, how you feel or what it feels like when you touch it. So when you're trying to do a mindfulness of things activity, try to, you know, spend maybe like five minutes um, of uninterrupted time for this exercise and engaging in that. Okay. So what I would do is this is, a, this is an activity you do not have to close your eyes to, but I'm gonna get started here in a minute after everybody kind of chooses what object they want. Um, and then we'll get started. All right, so what I would like everybody to do is just be able to look at the object, really focus your attention on the object that you've chosen to look at in your room. Again, then you grab the pen, watch, clock. Now without touching that object, I really want you to explore it first visually. So in your mind, describe what you see in ways that refer to the qualities of the objects, not judgments or interpretations. You know, small, for example, is a judgment while describing it as about one inch is just more of a description. You might imagine that you're describing the object to someone who cannot see. Think about what does the surface look like? What is its shape? How does the light illuminate its surface? Is it straight? Is it more curved? Maybe it's some combination of both. When you look at that object, is it shiny or is it dull? Are there any shadows across it? Maybe reflections on its surface? What colors or maybe shades of colors does it have? If you imagine touching that surface, would you imagine that surface being smooth or would it be more bumpy or grainy? Does it look like it's soft? Does it look like it's hard? Just really pay attention to what you can really see about that object. Now, once you feel like you have a good understanding of, of what that object looks like, now if possible, I want you to take the object in your hands. 
So you might have to go and walk over to that object. Once you're there, I'd encourage you to close your eyes to really try to be able to focus on your sense of touch. I want you to explore how does it feel to hold or to touch this object? Run your fingers across it, feel its surface, the different edges. Once again, paying attention to whether it's smooth or if it's rough. Is it hard or is it soft? Is there any sharp points? Is it something you can move? If you're able to hold that object in your hand, how much does it feel like it weighs like? How does it feel against? surface of your hand. Is the object hot or cold, just room temperature? How does it feel at different parts? Is parts of it soft or parts of it are more rough? Really explore it with your hand. Now I just want you to just kind of open back your eyes. Now after really physically exploring that object, I want you to look at that object again. Are there different things that you notice now when you look at it that you didn't before? now that you've examined it physically. Maybe there's little bumps that you didn't notice when you first looked, but you do notice now. Do you view it differently? After you feel that you've fully explored it both by touch and by sight, I ask you just to just come back so we can discuss a little bit about what that's like. So again, noting that this can be something that takes five minutes. It could take 20 minutes, depending on the activity, depending on the object, depending on how much time you have. So let's say you're in that car and you're trying to relax a little bit on your lunch break not feeling too comfy about closing your eyes and engaging in mindfulness. Well, maybe it's finding that place in your car, that random napkin and doing this with. We're always surrounded by just innate objects that we can be able to go and really engage our senses. You might even be able to engage more of your senses depending on what the object is. Maybe you can engage your sense of smell, depending if it actually has a smell. You can maybe even be able to engage your sense of hearing if by moving it, it makes different sounds. I don't necessarily recommend engaging your, your sense of taste with just random objects around the room. But again, if appropriate, you're more than welcome to do that too. The point of this is just again, to bring your mind back to the present moment and to really just be able to engage in present moment thinking without your mind going too much in the future or too much in the past. So any thoughts on engaging in a, a mindfulness on the go activity like this? Uh, I, I, I personally had a little bit, sorry, I apologize. Uh, I personally had a little bit of challenge with, uh, not being judgmental with it. I was like, oh, this is, I'm looking at my lamp, by the way. <laughs> and I was like, there's a little stain on the part of it. And I was like, ah, oh, that's a little ugly stain. But I, I had to kind of pause for a second and just be with it and not judge it. And just simply just to acknowledge it and pay attention that's to it. <laughs> yeah, that's a really great point. Absolutely. It's hard not to be able to do that judgment. And we don't realize how much we judge it. Yeah, you know, when we yeah, think yeah. about describing something, we think of describing it as like small or big. Well, that technically is a judgment. You mm -hmm. know, it, it's how do we really, you know, become more aware of the different ways that we judge things on an everyday basis. And once we have that awareness, how do we be kinder about it and actually be more objective about it? Mm -hmm. yeah, so thanks for it sharing that. Definitely makes me reflect on how often, like you said, we judge everything, like our outfit, or it's just a, a heavy mindset to always have with us all the time. So when transitioning to just being with it, total, total adjustment. 
absolutely. And I, and I appreciate that you're describing it as heavy, because I think that's very true. And it's a heavy burden to be able to carry. And I don't think we even realize how much we do it until we start engaging in some of these mindfulness practices. You know, mindful activity um, I, I often will do in person with people is, you know, take a magazine out and take some pictures of that magazine and then describe those pictures without using judgment. It's really hard to do. Because again, we think that we don't even think about being judgmental, really are, because we're making interpretations. So what I describe as, again, you know, large, someone else would be like, well, that's small compared to an elephant. Okay, that's true. So their perspective is different, which means it's a judgment. So how do we kind of change that mind frame? And that could be a really great way to be able to engage in mindfulness no matter where we are. All right, well, I'm going to move on to the last um, kind of activity that we're going to go on um, for today related to mindfulness, and it's my personal favorite. So as I kind of disclosed earlier, I have a harder time because um, I think I'm, I'm earlier on in my own kind of journey with mindfulness, and so I have a harder time really being able to kind of just sit um, with just music or just be able to sit um, in, in the moment. Sometimes my thoughts just go to random places. Um, you know, and so they're harder to be able to manage, but I recognize very much so that I can, if I'm in tune to my body more, I can be able to kind of turn off some of those thoughts and just pay attention. Um, it also helps me be aware of my body more in ways that I don't think we are all the time. You know, unless you're really like in pain, a lot of times we don't notice like, how's your foot feel right now? If it's not hurting, we don't really pay attention to how it might be feeling just in the moment. Where progressive muscle relaxation can be a great way to be able to do that. It's also something that is not as intense as even yoga. It's something you can do in your chair, wherever you're at, and that as you get used to it, you can also take on the go. You'll find that when you're doing progressive muscle relaxation, there are certain parts of your body that are gonna be more difficult to relax than others. Those are gonna be key information to know later on. Um, for me personally, it's my shoulders. You know, my shoulders are the most difficult for me to relax. This is where I hold a lot of my tension. Um, and so for me, if I'm in a really stressful situation, I may not have, you know, the 10, 15 minutes to go through a whole body relaxation, but I can lift my shoulders up and stretch them, try to touch them to my ears and put them down. Because I know that that's where I keep a lot of my tension, right? And so by really exercising that, that place in the moment, it can give me some of the same benefits um, and kind of help kind of just relax down the moment. So, you know, as you practice this, just like any other exercise, you'll become more aware of the different parts that are more difficult for you to be able to relax than others. And this is just one form of progressive muscle relaxation that I'm going to go through. There's lots and lots and lots of different ways that you can stretch these different muscles. There's lots of different ways that people do it. You know, so if you find that it, you actually get more relaxation or able to be more mindful by engaging in this, um, check out some different recordings out there and some different stretches out there that really work well for you. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get started with this. And so what I'd ask everybody to be able to do when engaging in this activity is just to try to find a comfortable spot, whether that's laying down, um, sitting in a chair, if you want to be cross-legged, great. If you want to be feet flat on the floor, wonderful. Whatever is really going to work for you that's comfortable. Um, and again, I do really recommend people closing their eyes for this activity, but I also recommend that that might not be where your comfort is, and that's absolutely fine as well. If you're not comfortable with closing your eyes, find a spot to really be able to focus on in your room, in your environment, um, to be able to kind of direct your eyes and just kind of let them relax as much as possible, maybe become even a little bit blurry, um, just so you can just be able to focus on your body and not have much distraction. So I'm just gonna count to three, and then we're gonna get started. So just kind of find that comfortable position and then close your eyes or relax your eyes as much as possible. Breathe in on one. Breathe out on two. And on three, just start paying attention to your whole body, how it feels sitting or laying against the surface that you're sitting in currently. Keep breathing in and out in a way that is relaxing to you. Let your body get heavy, comfortable. Sink down in the chair, 
or bed or floor that you might be residing on right now. Now, as you continue to do that, I want to bring your attention up to your head. Our head is carried by our neck all day long. We don't even notice sometimes how heavy that might be. What I would ask all of you to do right now, just bend your head and your neck back, stretch it back as comfortable as you can. Notice the different muscles involved in this easy stretch. Nod your head kind of back and forth feeling if there's any areas of tension, really bringing it all to the surface. And just kind of roll it around and relax it back. Kind of letting that tension just melt away. You need to take those breaths in and out. You might find that you still feel some tension. Maybe you're more aware of tension in your neck than you were beforehand. That's okay. Definitely put your head back again. Bring all that tension to the surface. Stretch it to the left. Stretch it to the right. Again, then roll it back around in a way that's comfortable to you. While you're at a calm resting position. Now let's move forward from the back of your head and your neck to your face. Again, remember you're, you're by yourself and no one's watching. What I want you to do is scrunch up your face as much as you can. Just scrunch up that forehead and eyes. Scrunch up your mouth. Bring all that tension to the surface. And now just let it go. Relax your eyebrows and your forehead. Feel that relaxation go down your cheeks, to your mouth, and your chin. You might even find it more relaxing to just kind of have your mouth slightly open, kind of relax your jaw. Sometimes we're not aware of how much tension we really carry around in our jaw. Try to relax that whole area to your comfortable position. Now let's move down to our shoulders. Just like I showed earlier, I want you all to push your shoulders up like you're trying to touch your ears. And just really hold that position. Feel the tension in your shoulders and your upper arm, maybe a little bit in your neck, maybe your upper back even. Really study those muscles and tension. And now just let it go. Let your shoulders just fall down. Rest against the chair or the bed or the floor that you're laying on. Again, with any of these areas, if you still feel tension, that's okay. You can be able to do it again to be able to get some of the area and tension out. But if not, just note it. It's not good or bad, it just is. All right, now we're going to do work down a little bit more to our stomach. Our stomachs also carry a lot of tension as well. It's harder to be able to stretch these muscles in a way that is not very strenuous. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk through it and not really be able to demonstrate it, which you'll see or hear in a second why that is so. But what I'm going to ask you all to do is take a deep breath in and then hold it. Feel the tension in your stomach muscles as you hold your breath, especially in your ab area, even your lower back. And now let it out. Let those muscles relax. And our core area here, it keeps us up 
all day. She does important jobs. So it's good to just let it relax down whenever we can. Now we're gonna move a little bit more down the leg to do an exercise that's gonna impact your lower back and your legs. So if you can find a way in your comfortable position to have your feet flat against the surface. So if you're sitting, maybe flat against the floor. If you're laying, flat against the bed or, or the floor that you're laying on, whatever you can, just have your feet flat against the surface. What I'm gonna ask you to do at that point is just push your feet down against that surface like you're trying to move. You'll feel that tension all the way up your leg and your lower back just by pushing against the ground. Now don't push so much that you actually sit up, just enough that you have to tighten up those muscles while staying on the ground. Explore your calves and your thighs and your lower back. And all the muscles involved in this simple stretch. Now, slowly lift those feet up, relax your calf, and your knees, and your thighs. Let your lower back melt into your chair or bed or floor. Just return back to that feeling while you breathe in and out, imagining just pushing out any tension in your body with every breath that you take. Now I ask you to pay attention again back to your feet. Our feet carry us around all day. They definitely need attention. So what I want you to do is try to almost make a fist with your feet so curl your toes in, really push the tension and study every toe, your big toe, your little toe. Feel the stretch as you try to squeeze them all together like a fist with your feet. And then relax them. As you relax them, you might even feel more relaxation in your ankle area by doing that. Is that one simple stretch affects so many different muscle groups. Pay attention to every toe, every tendon. Just picture them melting away any tension. Now, as you continue to breathe in and out, I want you just to do a scan of your body. Kind of starting with your head and your neck and going all the way down. Noting if there's any place of tension that you feel. You still feel some remaining tension in those areas. Try to do the stretch again. If you realize you have less tension in all your body, that's good too. Just breathe in and out and really enjoy that relaxed feeling, that comfortably heavy feeling as you let your body just relax out. Again, those who are still working on the different places they feel tension, please continue to be able to do so. But as you feel comfortable, just slowly open back your eyes. For those that are listening on a recording, just pause at this point until you're ready. All right, everybody. So kind of reactions in the moment, what that was like for, for, I guess, Jimmy, I'll ask you, since I have you right here, what that might be like for you. It's 
I'm like, I'm mute. <laughs> yeah, I'm mute. I'm mute. Um, it was super relaxing. I think that was the job, right? Um, I was noticing myself getting tired, um, probably because we did back to back meditation. Um, it was good. You know, it helped me feel relaxed. When I feel relaxed, my mind's not anxious. I'm able to be in control. I feel like I was able to not focus on my thought, I was just focusing on my body. Wonderful. And thank you for sharing that. And I'm so glad that you brought up the piece about feeling tired afterwards. Because yes, I agree. You know, doing three in a row, we almost spent a whole hour doing relaxation exercises. So definitely feeling tired can be expected. Um, but also, it's a good thing to recognize for those that might have problems with some sleep, that doing some of these before sleep can be actually or before going to bed can be really helpful in getting your mind um, and body into that relaxed state that makes it easier to be able to go to sleep. And also, for those that are doing this for more anxiety management, not doing it before sleep might be beneficial because you might just end up falling asleep and not getting the full benefit of going through all of it. So it's a good thing to kind of really recognize, and I appreciate you pointing out the relationship that sometimes we can feel tired afterwards, um, and that's okay. You know, sometimes we can feel refreshed, sometimes we can feel sleepy, and all of that is okay and completely acceptable. Back to that mindfulness piece of things. Mm -hmm. So I think that wraps us up for this afternoon. Um, mm -hmm. But again, those of you that are watching this after the fact, if you're interested in learning more about different relaxation exercises, there's some great also videos on here. But you can always contact us at CAPS, and we'd be glad to be able to give you some different relaxation exercises, you know, be able to meet with you to really figure out what might be some relaxation exercises and mindfulness practices that will work even better for you with your specific concerns. Um, right now, it's end of July, for those watching after the fact, you can be able to email us to be able to get set up for an appointment. And you email us at umdearborncaps at umich.edu. Um, we are hope of being able to have our phone line up and working within the next week or so. So at that point, you can be able to call us um, to be able to set up a time to be able to meet. And that number is 313-593-5430. Um, but regardless, we check our email constantly, so you can always be able to reach us there, and we'd be glad to set something up with you. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining this afternoon. All right, thank you, everyone. Bye.